Today, I'll be speaking with Jim McKenna about the near future. How can law firms continue and leverage their undeniable achievement to date? Quick adaptation to working remotely. McKenna focused on the role of collaboration systems, and most interestingly, he considered their role as the ultimate portal. Welcome to Law Firm Weekly. It's really good to have you here. Jim McKenna is the Chief Information Officer of Fenwick & West, a Global 100 firm. Jim is also the President of ILTA, International Legal Technology Association. Jim, welcome to Law Firm Weekly. Thank you very much, Shai. It's very nice speaking with you today. I will talk to you, obviously, today about how firms can continue and improve the work they've done today to adjust to the situation we're all in. But before I talk about the future, the near future, what is it that you believe was the most important thing that your firm and maybe other firms did in order to deal with and adapt to the situation we're in right now? It's an excellent question, Shai. We had invested heavily in our infrastructure and such, and on January 1, 2020, no one thought in just 90 days that we would have all 1,000 Fenwickians working from home. But fortunately, we were in a position where we could transition seamlessly from working on-prem to working remotely. We had the ability to scale up to get notebooks to everybody. Uh, the systems could handle all the people logging in. And in very short order, all of Fenwick was able to figure out what it took to connect remotely, work remotely, and start learning to improve all the various processes that used to be reliant upon people making eye contact with each other. And how, in your mind, did this translate to how your lawyers work in the market, not the least of which with, with their clients? What was the most important adaptation that came to be that made a big difference for, th for them in that context? From my perspective, the single biggest transition for our attorneys was the fact that there was no interruption in the service, their availability, or their visibility with our clients. Via the remote access tools that we have and audiovisual conferencing capabilities, we not only were able to maintain service to our clients continuously and such, our attorneys were immediately available to make eye contact virtually with folks as needed. It's really interesting, this idea that because of video conferencing, this, I, this concept of eye contact, which is so important and makes things even more personal, uh, it made such a big difference. And I think everybody can identify with it. I'm not sure that I've heard it put to, you know, quite the same way that you just put it, which is this eye contact. And I've never heard Fenwickians. Is that how you call yourselves? That's how we call ourselves, Fenwickians. <laughs> Very nice. In our conversation uh, leading to this interview, uh, one of the things that you've mentioned about changes that still need to come uh, was this whole area of business process reengineering. And you kind of said that incremental changes can make a big difference. Now, that's true anytime. And obviously, law firms have been going through this for the last two decades uh, very substantially. And of course, the automation that goes with it. But if we were to narrow that down a bit, for the next, say, three to seven months, what do you think firms should look at? Which business process could change incrementally and otherwise that will make the biggest difference for firms to be able to continue and improve how they work remotely? Sure, it's another excellent question. From my perspective, one of the best phrases out there is strategic planning is simply complying with the inevitable. And when the shelter-in-place, work-from-home phenomenon hit us in such, it immediately shined a spotlight on a variety of things that were inefficient in terms of work process and personal preferences. It provided us the need for folks to learn, one, how to use all the various tools that were available, and then the second of which is to figure out how this process can be made uh, better. And one of the things that has happened as a natural result of it is unnecessary or inefficient steps have been eliminated from various work process. You know, a simple thing is it might be a personal preference to have an email printed out on paper so you can read it later. Well, in a shelter-in-place environment, that might be prohibitively difficult if printers are not allowed to connect to your firm notebook from a security standpoint and such, and people will make adjustments. Investments in home technology so that people can uh, have access to you know, larger monitors and that type of thing and allow them to uh, work as efficiently as they were in the office. And those are the simple things. Uh, when you get into the more complex things, such as if it took us 100 steps to provide a service, 
the next day, can we do it with 99 steps? Or are there any one of those steps that we can make just a little bit better? It doesn't have to be a massive overhaul to result in a huge increase in efficiency. And we've all had to figure out how to do that in the last 90 days, and that will continue forward at least through the end of this year. So let me press on this point a little more, because what I would like is maybe if you can talk about specific processes, you know, as you said, that you can take it from 100 steps to 99 or 98 and incrementally make the difference that it needs to make. What kind of processes do you think could be, beyond the technologies you've mentioned, what specific processes do you think will make a big difference to the firm and how it works with its clients if you were to incrementally improve them in the next little while? Oh, sure. That's another excellent question. I think a perfect example, and this is one that people can uh, experience frequently and such, is on a daily basis, there's an excellent chance that you're either going to create a new matter or you might have a new client. And in, I'll call it the old ways and such, you might have a meeting about that or you might start an email conversation around, well, who's going to be involved with that? And what are the permissioning uh, steps necessary to meet that client's outside counsel guidelines or that matters uh, specific needs and such? Well, from a let's improve everything and automate as much as possible and such, there are safe things that can be done on a matter's birth. One of which is the relationship partner, the billing partner, the responsible partner. Those folks have access to that matter. Whom are those people's paralegals? Whom are their support staff? Is there an ethical wall against them? You can automate all those type of things so that when that matter is created, and this also is assuming that people are working towards a matter-centric perspective at work and such, you start from the perspective that only the necessary people have access. You automate as much of that as possible, and then you have a verified process to add others in as needed. And that is something that used to occur manually. That is something that used to occur with the human voice uh, and conversations and such. But 80% of that equation can be automated out of the uh, process, uh, saving some people time, promoting accuracy, and ultimately driving towards a more secure experience for that client's needs. So we are looking at process changes that obviously firms have been implementing over the last decade and more. What you're saying is, it's an inflection point, it's becoming even more critical for all of this to be done remotely and digitally and with less kind of manual work because of the fact that we're all working away from, uh, from the office. Um, another system that I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong uh, from your point of view, is becoming central. Uh, to the world that we're in, our collaboration system. Again, for the same reason that you've just mentioned, you can't really as easily step out of your office and go and talk to someone else. It's much more difficult to do, obviously. It's impossible, really, to do at this point for most of us. Uh, and collaboration system, Microsoft Teams, HiQ, and others are actually becoming more... Um, prevalent, or, or rather their uh, firms that already have them are, are accelerating their adoption, and others um, are obviously going through the process of implementing them quite rapidly right now. That being said, beyond the obvious um, roles of collaboration systems, where do you see the biggest value of a well-implemented collaboration system over the next four or five months is? In other words, what functionality uh, do you think it should have in order to really get the most out of it? Oh, sure. That's a tough question. And whomever gets this perfectly figured out is going to do uh, quite well in life and such. As we continue to experiment with that particular uh, avenue, it's become clearly evident that folks like moving away from email and having a conversation-centric experience on a particular subject and such. And you mentioned a variety of excellent tools, uh, Teams, HiQ, Slack, there's a bunch of them and such. And folks enjoy having a conversation they can add video as necessary, they can hear each other's voices, they can work on projects together in real time, see what's happening on the screen, and all of that is contained right in the moment on that particular issue, and they can come back and refer to it. And that has proven to be incredibly positive and popular. I, I don't know that we would have the adoption that we have now were it not for the shelter-in-place uh, phenomenon. It also opens up the door to a challenge. You know, back in the old days, in the old days, to be crystal clear, was 1231 2019. Yes. You used to have some designated repositories that you knew your information existed in. There was email, there was your document management system, you, there was your portal there, or intranet, there was your uh, whatever is your records management system. Well, now you've got a fifth 
and that is these collaboration spaces. And it's one thing to know that you have information, collaboration, and gold being created over here. It's another thing to get them to move back into the other four repositories. And that is where we also need to work hand in hand with our knowledge management professionals to figure out that efficient process and help people who are creating tomorrow's solutions share with as many people as possible internally so that we can continue to drive efficiency for our clients. You know, as you were talking about it, it dawned on me that there is a possibility. This is just a theory. I'm just throwing it out. I am, after all, a consultant to law firms, and we do go through this process of identifying opportunities to think about collaboration systems where things are happening in real time through interaction, where information is critical, and for that information to be available in the right time, uh, with you know, with the right security, etc. Whether or not it's kind of becoming the ultimate portal. What we thought about as a portal, maybe this is going to become that place. I think it's a very fair point, Shai. If we take a look at over the last 20 years, the industry's collective experience with intranets, I think people have done a really good job. And I think that experience may be about as good as it could be made in that context. Shelter in place changed the equation for everybody to work differently, try different things, and get into a rapid iteration point. And to your point, I do believe that we're a point of inflection and such. And these collaboration systems and such might be the, uh, the next strong, here's how we make a difference, work better together, this is where we go for that information, here's where we search against. And then the other systems uh, over the course of time might be feeding those collaboration points as compared to where they were once perceived to be the ultimate destination. You know, I think we're going to wrap up with this because uh, we kind of uh, ran out of time, but this is uh, the actually start for a whole slew of discussions that we're going to have, and hopefully you'll be back, and we definitely would like to talk about it with some KM managers and others, this idea that we just talked oh, about, yeah. about the portal uh, maybe shifting away from where it traditionally was to a collaborative system. Jim, I really want to thank you for taking time off from your extremely busy schedule to talk to us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shai. It's always a pleasure.